Hello, my name is Peter Bjorkvist. I have the pleasure to present my company for you today. And what we are doing, the name of the company is Vergraft. And the title of my presentation is Personalized Tissue Engineered Organs that Will Revolutionize Future Medicine. I have to show you this slide before I start. So the key word or the key words for my presentation, that is of course, regenerative medicine, but also advanced tissue engineering and personalization of tissues. That is what we are doing in order to improve transplantation. I will now tell you a little bit about my company and I will tell you about the technology and what we are doing. So Vergraft is a small biotech company in Gothenburg, Sweden. Gothenburg is west coast of Sweden. And what you see on this picture is our house or rather the house where we are doing our operations. So it's a company hotel in Gothenburg. We are a privately funded biotech company with a really global ownership structures. So we have owners from Europe, from Asia and from the US. We have been around since 2014 and we are a highly experienced team in Veragraft that has been doing this type of business for many years. I would like to start off my presentation by giving you some personal reflections. So I'll show you this picture first. That is a lobster, I guess you can see. And the reason for showing you a lobster is not because it's a beautiful animal. It's because you can see something is a bit odd with this lobster. Yes, it has one big claw and one small claw. And what I'm trying to tell you is that nature typically has a high capacity to regenerate. So if you take off a claw from a lobster, you will see that the lobster immediately start to regrow out a new claw. So after only a few months, there will be a claw as big as the first one. Unfortunately, humans are not that efficient in the capacity of regenerative medicine. So we sometimes or quite often actually try or we need to improve the regenerative capacity. We have done that for many years and you typically in the press see pictures like this. This is an outer ear, but it's not very complicated. This is a very simple tissue engineering. It's a cluster of chondrocytes basically that can form this outer ear. It's not fancy, although you think spontaneously this is very fancy. This, however, is really fancy. And you see a lot of these type of pictures, pictures today. It's a bioprinter. And you can see that this bioprinter has printed maybe a heart. But that is not reality today. We cannot print hearts or any other big organs today. So how can we then transform these type of pictures into reality? What can we do today? So what we can do is not really to create new organs, but what we can do in our company, we can personalize organs and making them clinically useful. And that is very important. And I will now try to show you how we do this. So personalization, we harvest an organ from a cadaveric donor, that is a deceased donor, that has an organ that we would like to use, but today cannot use. We take this organ into a first proce process called decellularization. Decellularization is basically to get rid of everything that makes um, this organ uh, having some sort of, um, of personal characteristics, uh, characteristics. So when you take off cells and DNA, you make this organ anonymous without any identity. And that is a very 
important and good building block for a second process, the personalization process. We harvest something that is unique for us in our company. We harvest blood from the future patient. With this blood and in our personalization process, we can make this empty organ, these anonymous organs to get an identity. And importantly, this new identity belongs to the patient. So we have a personalized, uh, in this case, a blood vessel that we can ship to surgeons and to um, replace a defective organ. Again, in this case, a blood vessel. This is very important for a couple of reasons. So we, as you have seen, we make this um, foreign organ called allogeneic organ to become own or personalized. By doing that, we can overcome the problems with the foreign organ being that we have to take care of an immune system. We have to uh, press down the immune system close to zero in order to uh, transplant an organ. Now we can transplant this organ to the patient without any problems with the immune system. And that is very important for medicine today because to live the rest of your life with a, a highly suppressed or even uh, absent immune system is a, is a big uh, problem and a big burden for the patient. We have to do that without any other risks, in this case again blood vessel, without causing thrombosis, um, rejection as I said, infection or any mechanical failure with the graft. And yes, we are, we are doing that. I will show you some preclinical data now from first large animals. So we have uh, done a lot of our studies in pigs. Pigs is a very good organ for vascular disorders. So as you can see, we have short-term, we have long-term studies in large pigs, in mini pigs, and the, the most important studies are up to one year of length. Uh, we do that by personalizing uh, the organ or the blood vessel with the pig's own material, exactly as we would like to do with humans in the future. The endpoints, again, that we are looking for, that is very important for us to, to trace, that is rejection, occlusion, mechanical failure, and infection. These are some uh, pics from what we do here in Gothenburg, Sweden, or in Spain, where we do these large animal studies. You see upper left, our main surgeon, head of vascular surgery in Gothenburg, Sweden, Klaus, doing the surgery. You see the pigs uh, from the outside. Uh, left uh, on the bottom, you see before we sacrifice the animal uh, angiography, the blood flow through the vessel is perfect. And bottom right, you see a blood vessel um, that we have taken out from the pig, opened up, uh, folded up, and you see a shiny, nice, perfect surface, meaning that we have no problems inside the blood vessel. Even more important is, of course, to, to trace uh, on the molecular level. And we do that, of course. And here you see something important and interesting. On the upper two slides, you see a native uh, vein, vena cava in this case. You see uh, the white dots are cell cells. Uh, uh, as are the blue dots on the right side, but the red staining that is for endothelial cells. You see the bottom two, the so-called PTEV, the personalized tissue and engineered veins we are working with. You see that they are more or less indistinguishable from the native vessel. So already as early as five weeks post integration, this looks more or less like a perfect native vein. And uh, this is exactly what we want to see in order to proceed. These slides are from a one year study. Again, angio angiography on the left side, you see the, the opened up uh, vessel showing this shiny, nice, perfect surface 
without any disorders. On the right hand side, you see a beautiful staining from CD 30, uh, 31, again, a, a, a specific staining for endothelial markers. So, the conclusion here is that we are confident that our uh, technology is safe and we would like to go into the clinic now. Our first target is called uh, chronic venous insufficiency. And you see in the Thai or groin region that we have deep veins uh, of the leg. This, if you look closer, these veins look like this. They are constructed with valves. And the muscle pump in the feet are pressing the blood up uh, to the heart again. And you see that the valves are easily open. But when the blood is trying to go down by gravity again to the feet, uh, these valves are closing. Very elegant. But unfortunately, this disease, chronic venous insufficiency, uh, is a disease when these veils are insufficient. And that is a problem because the patients are then having a too high pressure by the blood down to the feet. Pain and swelling of the leg, leg is the first um, status. But later on, also these type of very nasty uh, wounds are very often a result because of this increased pressure in the feet. So leg ulcers is the most uh, important medical um, outcome of the disease. And unfortunately, there is nothing we can do for the patients today because no one uh, have constructed a, a vein, neither biological or artificial, that contains these valves. So our product is simple. It's again this perfect valve that can open and close, as you can see here. Uh, it's a four to five centimeter long uh, vein segment that can be surgically implanted. It's our PTEV graft. Um, we are now planning the clinic. We would have been into the first clinical trial if there was not a pandemic ongoing, uh, but it is, as you know, so we have uh, to postpone a little bit, but we are in Spain and Lithuania with our activities at the moment, so two European countries, and we are very close to start uh, these um, studies in humans. So first trial will in Europe will be a small study. It's a typical phase one slash two. So safety trial with only 15 patients, but very important for the technology. We will study the patients up to one year. Uh, this is a, a unique study. No one has done anything like this before. And our goal is, of course, to treat the patients. And doing that large scale uh, will need um, an approval from the authorities. And we are looking for do that first in Europe. We believe that between 50 and 100 patients are enough um, in total in phase one and two. Uh, trials in order to get the first approval in place. We have global ambitions. We had only a few months back uh, some interactions with FDA in the US, and we have approximately 100 patients uh, in sight uh, and needed for market approval in the US. We do have other ambitions, but outside North America and Europe, we plan to have an out licensing model for our technology. Before I end up my presentation, I would like to say that this technology can, of course, be applied to other organs. We are working heavily with arteries, and arteries is a very interesting area where today a lot of static grafts are used. And we think, and the key opinion leaders we are working with, uh, they think that. Uh, the fully biological personalized organs like the ones we are uh, developing can uh, add a lot of um, advantages to these synthetic grafts. We also work with nerves and the nerves, they are the larger peripheral nerves damaged by trauma, for example. They are also in our personalization pipeline. Uh, these are of course also uh, a lot of medical unmet need and a lot of, um, of market opportunities for us for the future. Last uh, minute, I would like to tell you that we are financed by our owners, but we have also a lot of support from uh, Swedish actors, Swedish government, 
has supported us uh, quite a bit also on the European, European level. We do have a lot of funding um, to the company together with other partners as well. Uh, last two slides is to just make some uh, ad for something called Center for Advanced Medicinal Products in Sweden. Um, that is a big effort from the Swedish government uh, for the coming years to make Sweden really being strong into this field of uh, advanced um, uh, therapies. So Sweden is also seen to be, uh, or we have a hope to be a leader in this field for the future. So I'm ready with my presentation. I would like to thank you by saying that Veragraft has a strong ambition to re regenerate um, the future for our patients and our owners. Thank you very much. If any questions, please let me know.